Hey everybody, welcome to Yoga with Michelle. My name is Michelle. This is a power flow today. So you're gonna work, you're gonna sweat, you're gonna really move your body. But also remember that this is all levels. So um, if you're working with an injury, if you just need to modify, um, make it work for, for you and for how you're feeling today. Um, you'll notice I'm not perfect, far from it, and I don't expect perfection out of you. But what I do ask um, is that you bring your best to every pose. That's it. And to this, this whole class. So with that in mind, grab what you need. Let go of anything else, any distractions. If you can um, clear your, your space physically and mentally, and you can just be right here. And it's such a gift uh, for yourself this time. So with that, uh, let's get started. Let's take child's pose to begin with, just to arrive here on our mats and in this space to get into the mindset of our practice. So start a really powerful, really intentional breath. In through your nose. Pause out through your nose. Walk your hands to the right. Get a nice side body stretch. Expand through your rib cage and your tricep. Come back through center. Lengthen even more. Draw your tailbone back and your fingertips forward. Inhale, fill your lungs. And exhale off to the other side. Get grounded, get present. Put in what you know and what you need to make this time on your mat impactful, empowering what you need. Press down in your elbows, bring your palms together and your thumbs right to the back of your neck. A little bit extra tricep stretch here. And bring your hands back down to the mat. Spread your fingers out nice and wide. Another big full breath in, fill every crevice. And tuck your toes, make your way to downward facing dog. As always, this first down dog, bring a little bit of movement before you settle in to stillness. So maybe a scan from your fingertips up to your tailbone and then down to the center of your heels. Bringing in awareness and mindfulness. Then set your eyes at one spot, right? Your drishti for every pose and every transition. So you're not looking around, you're not getting into distraction and into your head. Create a little bit of an external rotation in your arms. Draw your shoulder blades back. Pull your belly in. Come up high on your toes, then sink your heels back down one more time, really lengthening the backs of your legs. Again, come up high. This time, keep your hips high. Look forward, tiptoe to the top of your mat. Ragdoll. And still just integrating into your practice. So taking this first part nice and slow. Don't worry, we'll get moving, I promise. Couple of breaths here. Inhaling everything you need and exhaling what you don't. You'll toe your feet a little bit closer together. Maybe even your big toes touching or just hip distance apart. Roll up to standing, reach up, extended mountain pose. Nice and tall, big full body stretch. Again, if you wanna bring in some extra movement, do that. Especially if you're doing this practice early in the morning. You can open your eyes nice and wide. Maybe cactus out your arms. You're looking for not necessarily what's easiest or most convenient 
or even what feels good in the moment, but what's needed for you. Pull the pit of your belly in and up. Take a big breath in, look up. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift, nice flat back. I think that is such a good thing to remember, not just in yoga, but also just in life, right? We don't do always what's easiest, always what's convenient or what feels good in the moment, but looking for right, the outcome that we want, how we're gonna feel better in the end. So practice with the end in mind, with your Shavasana or whatever you've got after this, and then put that into your practice. Draw your shoulder blades up, take a big breath in, and then forward fold, hinge at your hips. Extended mountain pose, reach back up, fold. Halfway lift, high plank. And just like a high push-up position, kind of up-leveled though, so um, press down in each fingertip, especially the big knuckle of your pointer finger, that tends to lift off. But be really aware, really intentional how you set up the physical foundation of your poses. Remember, you can always come down on your knees. You can also lift a leg, add in a float or an arm balance. This is your time, your practice. It's your creation. Shift forward, lower down, low plank, upward facing dog. Press the tops of your feet down. Take a moment to open your chest. And then tuck your toes, lift your hips back to downward facing dog. We'll take that a little bit quicker. One breath per movement. Come up high on your toes, look forward, step or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, breathe in. Forward fold, breathe out. Extended mountain pose, reach up high. Fold. Half lift, inhale. Chaturanga, one fluid motion as you exhale. Upward facing dog, shoulders straight back. Downward facing dog. Press down in your hands. Really fire up your core. Come up high on your toes again. Look forward, step or float. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose. Again, keep your feet at 12 o'clock. Hip distance apart or closer. Press down in the center of your heels. Draw your heels away from each other. Not a big movement here, but just energetically pulling them out to fire up your outer thighs and your glutes. To bring your hands to heart center, but draw your shoulder blades back. Make sure you're not hunching over, but go for a long straight spine and a neutral pelvis. Okay, so no pain in your low back. Ground down through your feet. Then lift your right foot up. So shift your weight into your left foot. Come into warrior three. Press the center of your heel back. Reach your fingertips forward. Okay, look at one spot right at the top of your mat. And back to chair pose. Sink your hips down low. Switch sides. Shift your weight into your right foot. Send your heels straight back. Squeeze your thighs towards each other. A pointer flex your lifted foot, but bring awareness, bring action to your hands, your feet, your core, and back to chair pose. Sink down, forward fold. Halfway lift, lengthen the crown of your head forward. Chaturanga, stack your elbows right over your wrists. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three-legged dog, right side. So lift your heels straight up. Press your chest back towards your thighs. On your inhale, lift your heel up even higher. Nice. I'm saying that because I'm assuming that you're doing it. If not, in the words of my husband, do better. Just kidding. You've got it, lift up, come forward, right knee to right elbow. 
keep your hips up high. Make sure they're not sagging down or you're not collapsing in one shoulder. And take it back up. Three-legged dog, nice and long. Come forward, opposite elbow. Twist, contract. And on your next inhale, take it back up. Hug your knee to your chest. Step forward, landing nice and soft. Warrior one. Let your back heel come down. So your back foot's gonna face maybe 10 or 11 o'clock. Draw your right hip back and your left hip forward. And if you already know, if you're like, yep, warrior one, got it, go right into it, right to your edge in the pose. Right, they say the pose doesn't begin until you wanna come out of it. So warrior one, begin. And if you find your thoughts wandering, and getting stuck in avoidance or distraction or judgment, begin again. Warrior one. Warrior two. Fire up your right glute to bring your knee out right over your ankle. Squeeze your shoulder blades together on your back. Keep them just like that. Bring your hands to heart center. Shift your weight back. Got a nice long straight spine here. So again, not hunching over. Eyes at one spot, pull your belly in. Back to warrior two. Flip your palm, reverse. It lengthen your rib cage. And cartwheel your hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog. Exhale the air out. Three-legged dog, left side. Lift your left heel straight up. I point or flex your foot, but choose one fully. I be all in. So don't leave it up to chance. You're not just hanging out, but you're up to something. Something bigger than this pose. Lift your heel up higher. Come forward, left knee, left elbow. Don't let your head hang down. Come up high on your back toes. So this contraction and then the lift, super important. Take it back up, three-legged dog. Come forward, twist. Again, feel free to add the arm balance or a push-up or stillness. Then on your next inhale, take it back up. Nice and high, hug your knee to your chest. Look forward, plant your foot, warrior one. And so not just throwing your leg forward and hoping for your best. I hope isn't a strategy, as you may know, or maybe you've heard before. But yoga is about being intentional and giving purpose to these poses and presence. And it's just being in the practice here on your mat so that you can put that into your life. So it truly is about more than these physical poses, this physicality, but it's a mental practice. Go down deeper into your warrior. Take your eyes up higher. Where you look is where you're gonna go. So if you're always looking down, right, it's gonna round out your shoulders. You're gonna go down. If you look further, you go further. If you look higher, you go higher. Warrior two. Spread your fingers out wide. Lift the crown of your head up. Squeeze your thighs towards each other. If you're not sweating by now, right? know that there's more. There's more available in those details that make a difference. Lift your toes, spread your toes, fire up your core. Bring your hands to heart, center, shift back. Pause right here. Okay, draw your shoulder blades together on your back. Lengthen your neck. Maybe soften your face. Back to warrior two. Flip your palm, reverse. And cartwheel your hands down. Chaturanga, low plank. Upward facing dog. Lift the crown of your head up, downward facing dog.
And I say to soften your face because yoga is not just a balance of like holding on and letting go and figuring out, right? The poses or balancing on your hands or one foot. It's also a balance of being persistent, having purpose, but also some lightness, right? Not taking yourself too seriously. So in this flow, let it be messy, let it be imperfect and show up anyway. So one breath per movement. Feel free to add things in, to take things out. But on your inhale, come up high on your toes. Look forward, step or hop to the top of your mat. Halfway lift, forward fold. Chair pose, reach up high. And warrior three, right side. Chair pose, core, core, core. Warrior three, send your other heel back. Chair pose, sink down low, forward fold. Halfway lift, flat back, low plank. Don't let your hips sag. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three-legged dog, right side. Come forward, right knee to right elbow, shift back. Come forward, twist, opposite elbow. Straight back up, warrior one. Inhale up, warrior two. Hands to heart center, shift back. Back to warrior two. Reverse, cartwheel your hands down, low plank. Upward facing dog. Bring your chest forward, downward facing dog. Chest towards your thighs. Three-legged dog, left side. Come forward, left knee, left elbow. Squeeze your oblique, shift back. Come forward, bring your shoulders over your wrists, twist. Straight back up, warrior one. Pull the pit of your belly in and up. Warrior two. Hands to heart center, shift back. Back to warrior two. Reverse, big breath in. Cartwheel down. Low plank, exhale. Upward facing dog, look forward. Downward facing dog, look back. Take a breath in. Empty all the air out. Press down in your hands. We'll take that one more time. Come up high on your toes, look forward, step or hop. Halfway lift, forward fold. Chair pose, and maybe bring your hands to heart center. Warrior three, right side, chair pose. Warrior three, left side, reach forward. Chair pose, forward fold. Halfway lift, pull your belly in, low plank. Upward facing dog, straighten your arms, downward facing dog. Three-legged dog, right side. Shift forward, right knee to right tricep. So take it up even higher. Three-legged dog, come forward, twist. Keep your hips high. Straight back up. Warrior one. Root down, rise up. Warrior two. Hands to heart center, shift back. You've got it. Shift forward, warrior two. Reverse. Hands to the mat, low plank. Squeeze in as you lower down. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three-legged dog, left side. Come forward, knee to triceps, so keep your hips high. Shift back. Come forward, twist. Make sure you're not collapsing in your shoulders. Lift your heel up. Warrior one, fullest expression. Warrior two. Shift back. Come low. Back to warrior two. Reverse, reach up and back. 
cartwheel your hands down, low plank, grip the mat with your fingertips, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. I know it's hard, you're killing it, right? I see you, I'm with you. It's supposed to be hard, right? If it wasn't hard, it wouldn't be empowering. It wouldn't have the impact that you have access to, that's here for you, available on your mat. Okay, so step into it, stay with me. Three-legged dog, right side. This time, bend your knee and stack your hips. Come up high on your toes. You can stay right here or flip your dog. Maybe even come into wheel but open your chest up towards the ceiling. Let your head hang back. Lift your hips and come back around. High plank. Pause there in high plank. Right, full body integration from your heels to the crown of your head. Then plant your right hand at the center of your mat. Side plank, right side. You can stay right here or reach forward. Modify if you need to. You can bring your knee down, come down on your forearm, or squeeze knee to elbow for three. Squeeze two, lengthen, and one. Hand to the mat, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three legged dog, left side. So we'll do the same thing on this side. Bend your knee, stack your hips. Okay. Come up high on your toes, flip your dog. Stack your knees over your ankles, reach forward. Okay, so ground down through the center of your heels, the ball mounds of your big toes. Use your legs, use your glutes to lift up and come back around, high plank. Tilt your tailbone down towards your heels a little bit of roundness to your low back. All right, so no sagging, right, but instead, almost like a scooping and a hollowing out of your armpits. Plant your left hand at the center, side plank on the left. Okay, you can reach forward. Again, you can modify, make this work for you, but make it work for you. All right, get unstable, get vulnerable. This is the perfect place for it. Perfect place to do yoga, right? On your mat, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Then take three-legged dog on the right. Big step forward, crescent lunge. So stack your back heel right over your back toes. Bring your biceps right by your ears. Hinge forward, get long. Bring your hands to heart center, twist to the right. And so use the leverage between your elbow and your knee to really ring out, lengthen your neck. Take a breath in, warrior two, breathe out. Flip your palm, reverse, extended side angle. So you can bring your forearm to your thigh or your hand down to a block or to the mat, but reach your fingertips up, twist, fill up, and bring your hands down to the mat, low plank, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three-legged dog, left side, Step it forward, crescent lunge. Squeeze your thighs into one line. A lot of hip stability here. Then pull your belly in and up, hinge forward. Fire up your back leg, hands to heart center. Take a breath in, lengthen, and then twist. Softness in your jaw, your eyebrows, Pull your belly button in towards your spine. Maybe make a little more space to twist. And then open up 
to warrior two. <laughs> Stay low in your front knee. Flip your palm, reverse. Extended side angle. Again, not looking for perfection here. Just progress, just being here and showing up. When you fall out, begin again. Open up, hands to the mat, low plank. Upward facing dog, lengthen your neck, downward facing dog. Come up high on your toes, look forward, step or hop. Halfway lift, forward fold. Fingers to toes, forward fold. So grab your big toes, pull your upper body down. Maybe a little nod of your head from side to side. Nod your head, yes. Gorilla, bring your palms under your feet, your toes up to your wrist creases. You can bend your knees as much as you need to here. Draw your shoulder blades together on your back. Go for a deep fold Then start lifting your sits bones up. So from your inner core, your pelvic floor, right, everything lifting up, keep that. And keep that engagement, but release your hands. I'm gonna step back just a tad. Plant your hands right at the top of your mat. Crow. And if you're just working on crow, right, if you know crow, go right into it. If you're working on it, if you're learning to set it up, or if it's totally new to you, right, you wanna give yourself a good foundation. So maybe even bring your hands out wider than what you would think. Spread your fingers out wide. Then create a little bit of an external rotation. It's gonna fire up your lats, give you a lot of stability there. Start with your hips up high. Bring your knees up towards your armpits or onto your triceps. Start to shift forward. Maybe you just lift one foot and then the other. Maybe you shift into your fingertips, lift both feet, squeeze your feet towards each other. All right, find some ease there in your neck especially, some stillness. So a lot of people think arm balances, right? You've got to have super strong arms, but in fact, it's in your core, right? So you can work on crow from a lot of different angles. And if you wanna work on crow, if you wanna get off your wrists, you could always go from a boat. So bring your knees to your armpits, flex your feet, right? Uh, 90 degree angle here in your arms, lift your chest. You're gonna get that same core engagement you need to flip it over onto your hands. And of course, just be patient with yourself. And right, it'll come, it'll happen. If you put in the work, just like anything else. Let's take a moment in a yogi squat, a malasana squat. So your heels in, your toes out. Yeah, just a few breaths here. Or if you're still in crow, right, stay in crow. Lift your chest. Right, another thing about crow that I always like to mention is uh, it's not like you're resting your knees on your triceps, on your arms. Really the mindset, the visualization that helps me is that you're lifting your arms up off or your knees up off your arms. Sorry, you got it, you know what I mean. But yeah, think lifting your knees up off your arms, not resting them on your arms. It keeps a core engagement, like you're lifting your tailbone straight up towards the ceiling or the sky if you're lucky enough to be outside right now. Here in North Idaho, it's winter, it's snowy. One more breath here. And we'll meet in a forward fold at the top of your mat. Shake it out. Maybe shimmy your hips from side to side. And slowly roll up to standing, reach up, extended mountain pose. Eagle, right side, right leg over, right arm under. 
feel free to take genie arms if that works better for you. But hug everything into center. Lift your elbows up in line with your shoulders. Right. Knit your front ribs in. Unravel, grab your right knee or your big toe. Open up to the right. Standing leg raise. So for you, it might look like this. Right, or again, grabbing your big toe or your foot and opening up. Bring your leg back to center. Straighten your leg, reach your hands up. Airplane. Send your heels straight back. Fire up your triceps, so the backs of your arms. Yeah, I'm a little wobbly today. No worries, no judgment here. Just practicing. Hands to heart center, half moon. Stack one hip on top of the other. I like to grab a block, but totally up to you. Lift your foot, yeah. Know that if you fall out, and it's not a failure, there's nothing wrong with it, it actually means you're on the right track. You're doing something, you're getting out of your comfort zone. So take it as a step in the right direction and forward fold, rather than something negative. And that's a powerful, especially uh, for me, when I made that, that mind shift, so incredibly freeing. Roll back up to standing. We'll hit up the other side. Start at extended mountain pose. Eagle on the left. Left leg over, left arm under. Standing leg raise, left side. Right, pointer flex your foot, but be intentional there. Set your eyes at one point to the right. Lift your knee up even higher. Lift the crown of your head up. Seal your lips. Breathe. Come back to center. Straighten your leg. Reach your fingertips up, right? Spiral your pinkies in towards each other. Airplane pose. Press the center of your heel straight back. Again, nothing wrong with falling out. And if you're stable, enjoy that stability. Maybe look for more. Lift your heel, lift your shoulder blades. Drop your left hip down slightly, so square your hips to the mat. Then bring your hands to heart center, and we'll open up to half moon. You can try the block on different heights, or water bottle, whatever you've got. Maybe a stool, or your dog. Or hover your fingertips off the mat. But draw your shoulder blades together on your back, spread your fingers wide. Engage your lifted leg, lift it up even higher, and release forward fold. Step your left foot back, warrior one. Warrior two, triangle. Straighten your front leg, reach forward, and bring your hand down to your shin or to a block but peel your shoulder back and your chest up towards the ceiling. Sweep your hand forward. Maybe your fingertips to either side of your front foot. Step your back foot forward. Pyramid. Press evenly into your heels. Take a halfway lift. So lengthen the crown of your head forward. Twisted triangle. Lift your right hand up. Again, opportunity to grab a block under your left hand. Or you can bring your right hand to your low back. Go for a long straight spine. Inhale, twist. 
and exhale, forward fold. Just a nice lengthening of your hamstrings. Step your right foot back, warrior one on the other side, warrior two, triangle. Keep the length in the sides of your body. Rotate the center of your chest up towards the ceiling. And ground down through your feet. Pull everything into center. Sweep your hands forward. Step your back foot forward. Pyramid. Draw your right hip forward, your left hip back. Take a halfway lift, pull your belly in, twisted triangle. Again, your hand could go up towards the ceiling or even to your low back. Make sure you're not straining your neck. Lift your toes, spread your toes. One more breath in, twist. And exhale, high plank. Pause there in high plank. Grip the mat with your fingertips, your knuckles, your whole palm. Shift forward, lower down nice and slow. Slower, slower. All the way down. <sighs> Bend your knees, windshield wiper from side to side. And go right into locust pose. So a little tiny break for your low back. Then right into it. Pointer flex your feet, lift your thighs, lift your chest, fire up your triceps. You can stay right here or bend your knees, reach for your ankles, floor bow. And I like to flex my feet. Imagine I'm putting footprints on the ceiling to draw your shoulder blades back. Lift up and release, lower down. You rest your cheek on the mat. Give yourself just a moment, but not so long that you lose momentum or you get distracted. So plant your hands right by your wrist, so right by your ribs. Ugh. We'll try that again. So plant your hands right by your ribs, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Come up high on your toes, step all the way through your hands, come down on your back, bridge. Press down into your feet, lift your hips up. You can shimmy your shoulders underneath you. Really press into the backs of your arms to lift your chest. Lift your right heel straight up. Pause there. Lift your hips. Switch legs. Keep your hips high. Press down into your grounded foot. Flex your lifted foot. Switch. Just one more each side. Switch. Last one. Lift your heel and release. Lower all the way down. Let your knees fall from side to side. Reclined butterfly. Bring the soles of your feet together and your knees out wide. You can reach your hands back behind you. Maybe cactus out your arms. A full, powerful breaths here. Hug your knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. And grab the outsides of your feet. Happy baby. Pull your feet down towards the mat. Rest the back of your head on the mat. Feel free to Rock from side to side a bit. 
and bend your knees 90 degrees. So bring your knees right over your hips. Right, pointer flex your feet like always, be intentional. Don't let them just hang out. And then bring your hands behind your head, lift your chest up. Right, so we're starting even here, like the top of a crunch. Ease in your neck, softness in your jaw. Right, so you're not holding tension in your face or holding your breath. Make sure and breathe. Take yogi bicycles. So opposite elbow to opposite knee. Notice I'm not pulling my knee to my elbow as much as bringing my elbow to my knee. All right, so a twist and a lift. Press your extended leg forward and down towards the mat. So nice and low, twist. Press your heel forward, twist. Take it a little bit faster, but still super mindful of our movement putting your attention on your core. Because where your attention goes, energy flows. So, so much more impactful to take it slow, and to be all here, putting in your best, rather than rushing through it, going through the motions, and just throwing your legs around. Instead, twist and lift. Press your heels forward. Okay, nice and low. Twist. Twist. For 10. If you come out, come right back in. Nine. Eight. Seven. Twist. Twist. Four. Three. Almost there. Two. One, hug your knees into your chest. Whew. And rock and roll forward and back. Plant your hands at the top of your mat. Step back to downward facing dog. Three-legged dog on your right. Bend your knee, lift your hips. Nice core stretch there. Half pigeon. Bring your right knee to your right wrist. Bring your foot towards the top of your mat. Maybe stay right here or walk your hands forward. Feel free to point your toes or tuck your back toes, lift your knee for a nice active pigeon. Nice and slow. Walk your hands towards the top of your mat. Draw your shoulders back. Lift the crown of your head up. And plant your hands. Step back to one last downward facing dog of the practice. Maybe pedal out your feet. Then three-legged dog on the left. Bend your knee. Stack your hips. Lift your knee up nice and high. And slowly left knee to left wrist. Be intentional setting up this pose so you get the hip opener, right? So you're not over on one side, but instead square your hips to the mat. And if you need a block or a pillow under one side, right, do that. Then walk your back foot towards the center of your mat. So you've got an inward rotation in your back leg. Lots of length in your spine. Two more full inhales. And full exhales here. Allowing your hips to open up. So make sure you're not holding any tension there. Nice and slow. Walk your hands towards your front shin. Sit up tall. Swing your right leg around. Seated forward fold. Come up on your sits bones. Flex your feet. On your inhale, sweep your arms open wide, reach up. Exhale, fold. Reach for the outsides of your feet. If you need a towel 
or if you have a strap or a belt or something, you can kind of lasso your feet here or just bend your knees. If you need more length, grab the block. Put the block at the bottoms of your feet. It allows for a bigger stretch. Release, plant your hands right by your hips, bend your knees, take reverse tabletop. You can face your fingertips in either direction. Slowly lower down. Take an inversion of your choice. Could be a headstand or a handstand. Maybe you've got a wall space or you can do that with ease on your mat or take waterfall or shoulder stand. So waterfall, you'll just put a block under your low back, lift your heels straight up, shoulder stand, stack your feet over your hips, and your hips over your shoulders. Just work to get upside down. Energetically lift your feet up towards the ceiling. Lift your chin. So create some space between your chin and your chest. If you're in shoulder stand, take plow. Deaf man's pose, bend your knees, bend your knees by your ears. And slowly, one vertebrae at a time, using your core, lower all the way down. Nice and slow. We'll take a big full body stretch here. So reach back behind you, point your toes, pull your belly in, take a big breath in, and hug your right knee into your chest. Extend your left leg out nice and long. First bring your knee out to the right, and then twist. Stack one hip on top of the other. Maybe bring your hands out to a T. Come back through center. Extend your right leg out nice and long. Hug your left knee in. Point or flex your foot. Bring your knee out to the left and over to the right. Come back through center. Take any last stretches you need. And then this is important. Take a moment here to acknowledge yourself and to just relax. Just be in the experience of all the work that you just put in. So don't skip this. Take Shivasana, close your eyes. Relax your fingers and your toes. Maybe turn the lights out. Let yourself sink down into the floor. Just be, just breathe. And take as long as you need here. And with your eyes closed, gently roll to your right side. And slowly come up to a seated position facing me. Sit up nice and tall. You can bring your hands to heart center or rest your hands on your knees. 
You roll your shoulders out a bit. Gently roll your head from side to side. Soft smile. Together we'll take one more big full breath in. Open your mouth, let it go. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me for this class. I hope to see you again soon, and I really hope to hear from you. So comment, um, and even more important than that, share this. Share this video. Share my channel with people that you know that need yoga in their life and that um, could really benefit from this. So I would appreciate that so much. Thank you, and see you next time.